Yeah. All right, folks. Hello and welcome to uh, a braid video, the first of my braid playthrough. My name is Leader Grev, uh, and a little introduction to what braid is. Braid is obviously a platforming game with sort of the little gimmick, the idea of messing with time. It is the vision of independent developer Jonathan Below, and to this point, no one has really figured out the meaning, but. Um, while the whole story, as we know it, is sort of this protagonist here, Tim, uh, going after a princess, there is a much more convoluted thing going on. There's a whole big deal going on, and we are about to find out exactly what that is. Alright, you start off in World 2, and that's significant, uh, but we'll get to that later, and it's called Time and Forgiveness. Alright. Tim is off on a search to rescue the princess. She has been snatched by a horrible and evil monster. This happened because Tim made a mistake. Not just one. He made many mistakes during the time they spent together all those years ago. Memories of their relationship have become modeled, replaced wholesale. But one remains clear. The princess turning sharply away. A braid lashing at him with contempt. Feisty. He knows she tried to be forgiving, but who can just shrug away a guilty lie, a stab in the back? Such a mistake will change a relationship irreversibly. Even if we have learned from the mistake, it would never repeat it. The princess's eyes grew narrower. She became more distant. Our world with its rules of causality has trained us to be miserly with forgiveness. By forgiving too readily, we can be badly hurt. But if we've learned from a mistake and become better for it, shouldn't we be rewarded for the learning rather than punished for the mistake? What if our world worked differently? Suppose we could tell her, I didn't mean what I just said. And she would say, It's okay, I understand. She would not turn away, and life would really proceed as though we had never said that thing. We could remove that damage, but still be wiser for the experience. Tim and the princess lounge in the castle garden, laughing together, giving names to the colorful birds. Their mistakes are hidden from each other, tucked away between the folds of time. Safe. That was quite deep. I will recite that next time I go out on a date. No, I won't. Woo, yay, frolicking through the meadows, space ball. I really like this game, it's very clever in its art direction. It, it looks unusual. It looks very painterly. In, in the, painterly in the sense of, um, like flash, or, the way you would draw in Photoshop. Where it feels sort of like incomplete and dodgy. Come here, you little rascal. Don't you meow at me. Solid snake. Blip. Oh, I see what I have to do here. Blip. 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 Oh, I have to wait for it. No! Oh. Damn you, collision errors. Uh, Alright, I see what I have to do. Oh no! Three, two, oh, damn it. Three, two, oh, darn it. It's going to take a while. And that is the game's mechanic. The ability to rewind time. Boing. Yep, that's the idea. So basically, Tim here, or the player, or however you wish to see it, can robot re rewind time. Quite handy. You ask me. Tim's a lucky guy. Alright, king. Whee! 
Hey, 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 and that looks like... Oh, it's a hand, I think. Ooh. There you go. Oh, wait a minute. That looks just about right. Come here, you rascal. Doink. There you go. All right, well, I can't really tell what's going on here right now, so we'll leave it at that. Oh, no, and I can't get those. There's got to be a way to get this. I don't know how. Huh. All something to look into. Hunt, hunt. All right, let's get into this. Ooh, this looks like an old schoolish Mario. To oh, darn it! Darn it! God. See, the idea of the game is that you're supposed to be better for the experience, but you really, <laughs> I'm really not. Never works out the way I want it to. Right, I want to avoid this guy, because I can sort of tell what's going on. That little panel up there in the upper right corner requires that I kill all of the enemy monsters, the Goombas, or clay heads, I don't even know what these are. Oh no! God. Oh, that was garbage. Yeah, that's how rewinding sounds. Trust me. Now I just need to get this last schmuck. Oh, come here. Sweet, soothing sounds of classical music. Actually, apparently this game is a commentary about the game development industry, and it's interesting because, uh, actually, uh, I'm quite interested in the whole dealio myself regarding the game industry. Ah, that's not gonna work. Oh no. No! Darn you! Make it, make it, make it. God damn it. I think the idea is to get that little, that monster. Or that, uh, puzzle piece. I need to get a little Goomba fellow over there. There you go. Perfect. So, uh, there you go, perfect. What I've been thinking about, because the game industry has sort of been inter interesting myself as well, uh, because it, it really is this big, wide open expanse of things that can be done. Well, you can see that puzzle piece right there. No, that was a mistake. I think I see what I need to do here. Ah, a bit too late. Perfect. And I'll be entirely honest, I'm not playing this completely blind. But I am. Oops. I am familiar with the premise and what goes on in the first several levels. So, as I was saying, uh, there's one thing I've been itching to address. Oh, dear, darn it. It's hard to commentate when you're so focused on not dying. So, here you go. I'm saving my little cupboard. Um, sort of, what I've been thinking about is, uh, really, the gaming industry and gamers as a whole are part of a much bigger culture of, like, entertainment, as I see it. And what we've been noticing recently, particularly with, um, uh, the Supreme Court case that uh, ruled actually in favor of video games, but 
the fact that it that still arose shows that the culture that the entertainment culture that video games are part of sort of doesn't see games as a positive entity, I guess. And that's a problem. Um, I'm going to take a pause and really like develop my idea because it's something I've been wanting to get out. Um, it's sort of like when a person has a heart attack and they survive, it's sort of like a sign you should be changing your ways, right? Well, when the game industry realize, like, when we have signs like the Supreme Court case, the fact that that happened in general, that people simply don't understand the merits of video games uh, is a problem. It means, or at least I see it as sort of a sign that we should be changing or adapting. Now, I'm not trying to say that video games have to change. In fact, I don't want that. I, I like video games the way they are, but we sort of need to be asking ourselves, is this the way we want the world to perceive us? Is this how we want to show ourselves as a part of culture? And another thing, Bill S978, um, I, I'm not going to get into the technicalities of that because everyone has differing views about that at this point, but the fact that people are so uneducated to not understand that video games are a part of the culture, to not understand the far-reaching effects certain things could have on video games, to not even take that into account, shows that we're really not putting ourselves out there well enough, or in a way that really gets the attention of people for whom it matters. For example, Ken Levine, developer of Bioshock, uh, recently uh, said we need to be getting our games out on The Daily Show, on... Uh, David Letterman, on things like that. We need people to see what games really are. We need people to understand what's going on. Alright, so... Just just ask yourselves that, and ask your friends, and... Like... How... Are we being perceived right now as gamers? And actually, it's funny, because this game really directly ties into that. Um, I was talking to my dad right when I bought this game, and I was like, Oh, Dad, you know, this, this game has a whole lot of meaning. Um... And I couldn't really explain it to him in Russian, so I decided to go and read from the Wikipedia, and it said something along the lines of, Some people theorize that Tim represents a scientist developing the nuclear bomb, and the princess represents the actual bomb. And my dad's like, oh, that's ridiculous. That's like taking this a sunflower and being like, what's the meaning? And it's because games are really seen as this entirely, like, one-dimensional thing. You've got princesses, you've got enemies, you've got a good guy. Good guy, bad guy, good good evil, absolutes, no meaning. And it's really upsetting that we're showing ourselves off like that. And I can't put all the blame on game developers because we're on YouTube, we live stream, we have advertisements, and we're really showing ourselves off in ways that aren't the best. For example, recently I was watching TV and I saw a Gamefly commercial and it had one of those like teenage boys who was all like, yeah, I couldn't, I didn't have a big enough game library before, but now I can get everything on the go with Gamefly. Jeez, it's so great. He's got like the Mountain Dew next to him and he's sitting on a couch, he's got his headset on. It's all like, yeah, I'm a douchebag. And that's really not the way I see video games. And I don't want to force my idea on anyone, but really, how are we being seen if there are so many warning signs that games aren't perceived equally as a medium? Like, what are we doing to remedy that? Are we even noticing that? And I'm going to get back to Braid right now, because that was a kind of a very strange and long rant that was, to a degree, kind of unnecessary, but just take that into account. Think about it. Mull it over in your head for a while, and now I'm finally going to get back to this, because you've been staring at the screen for a while now. All right. All those years ago, Tim had left the princess behind. He had kissed her on the neck, picked up his travel bag, and walked out the door. He regrets this to a degree. Now he's journeying to find her again, to show he knows how sad it was, but also to tell her how good it was. For a long time, he thought they had been cultivating the perfect relationship. He had been fiercely protected reversing all his mistakes so they would not touch her. Likewise, keeping a tight rein on her own mistakes, she always pleased him. You the sexual innuendo. 
but to be fully couched within the comfort of a friend is a mode of existence with severe implications. To please you perfectly, she must understand you perfectly. Thus you cannot defy her expectations or escape her reach. Her benevolence has circumscribed you and your life's achievements will not reach beyond the map she has drawn. This is all very deep stuff. This is what I'm talking about. We need more games like this. We need games like Bioshock. We need things dealing with culture, with things that matter, with th issues that are relevant. Perhaps less Call of Duty, less generic first-person shooters. I'm not saying we don't need first-person shooters. I love first-person shooters. But how about having a campaign that has a story that's emotional, that's touching, that's meaningful? All right, back to this. I'm not going to write anymore. Tim needed to be non-manipulable. He needed a hope of transcendence. He needed sometimes to be immune to the princess's caring touch. Off in the distance, Tim saw a castle where the flags flutter even when the wind has expired. And the bread in the kitchen is always warm. A little bit of magic. Huh. And this is world number three, time and mystery. All right, let's get to work. The pit. Seems that, ooh, what is going on here? What is going on here? Oh, I think I know what it does. Okay, let's see. Are you serious? There you go. Oh, I guess these green glowing items are items that are not affected by the time shift that move along with you. I don't know if that makes them not affected by the time shift or makes them even more affected by the time shift. Oh, right, here's what I need to do. I need to move. I'm going back in time, back in, back in time. Back to the future. Go back to the past. Oh, back to the past makes more sense. There you go, perfect. Oh, squeeze through like it's Mission Impossible. Perfect. Phase. Oh, this looks cool. I guess the green clouds are the kind that aren't affected. Or, yeah, they aren't affected by time shifting. Ah, time shifting. And it's funny because the control key is shift. <laughs> Alright, so let's see what's going on. Oh, god damn it. No! Oh, this is perfect. No! I ruined it! No, I ruined it. Let's see if I can do this. There, perfect. Don't ruin this. Don't mess this up. Don't. Perfect. Fantastic. Feel like a genius mastermind of geniuses. This is the easy way out. I don't want to take the easy way out. Give me challenge or give me death. Actually, that's an overstatement, but. Slight exaggeration. Let's try to get that there. Perfect. Right in position. Bam. Ba ba da ding. Ba bam. Ba ba boom. The ground beneath her feet. Sounds utterly mischievous. What the heck? I can't get that. Physically can't get that. There is no crouch feature. There are up and down buttons, but they make me look up and down like a crazy head bob. That's not what I'm looking for. I need something else. Hmm. I am utterly, utterly lost. 